Okay, but what about the effects of warming? Because you see it all the time. In fact, because the temperatures have been flat, folks almost never talk about the temperature anymore because it doesn't really support the argument of catastrophic warming because the temperature has really been flat over the last 10 years. Instead, they've shifted the argument. It's kind of the same thing that they've shifted the argument from global warming to the term climate change. But in fact, that's really a misnomer because CO2 can't change the climate on its own. CO2 can only cause warming. The only way the climate can change is if we see warming first. So if the world is not warming from CO2, we're not seeing climate change from CO2. But nevertheless, people tend to point to uh, extremities in the weather, extremities we've always experienced, but point to extremities in the weather and use these somehow as proof of this climate change or that somehow man is causing negative effects in the climate. Well, let's look at a few of those, and I can't get to all of them. I mean, there's websites that document literally hundreds of things, everywhere from acne to kidney stones to disease to you know insect mating or whatever. But we're going to talk about some of the most common just very quickly. Okay, one of the things you hear all the time is that global warming is going to cause drought. Well, this is number f from the U.S. only because the world doesn't collect this data very well. But looking at the U.S., the U.S., you can't see any drought trend. In fact, the biggest droughts in the U.S. happened, not surprisingly, back in in the Dust Bowl period of the 1930s. We've come nowhere near those numbers of, of drought. And you see that really there's no particular trend through the 20th century. We're not seeing any worsening of drought. Okay, earlier this year, in 2008, uh, a lot of folks pointed to tornadoes and wet weather in the Midwest as evidence of global warming. So it's not causing drought, it's causing wet weather. But we see no real trend in wet weather. You can see that the wet weather and extremely wet weather in the U.S. hasn't really trended over the last 100 years either. So there's not really any kind of trends in wet and dry weather. You'll hear a lot of anecdotes, news pointing to a drought here or a flood there, but there's always been a drought here or a flood there. Um, the key is looking at it in total, and in total we don't see uh, any trend. Now, the greatest example of looking at individual anecdotal examples without looking at the whole body of evidence is hurricanes. And lots of folks have pointed to Hurricane Katrina. Al Gore did, in fact, as evidence of global warming. How you can get from one hurricane to global warming, I don't know, because we've always had severe hurricanes. The best way to look at, and hurricanes are an odd metric, because just looking at landfalls in the U.S. is, is a terrible measure of, of any kind of activity because sometimes they happen to miss the U.S. or sometimes they come up short or sometimes they're strong for a long time but weaken before they hit landfall or vice versa. Scientists have come up with a better metric. It's called, called accumulated cyclonic energy. And what they do is they look at sort of the total energy in all the hurricanes and cyclones around the globe at any one month. And this is that graph over the last 20 years. And if anything, we've seen a declining trend in the strength and cyclo of cyclones and tornadoes around the world, both globally in red as well as in the northern hemisphere. We are not seeing any kind of upward trend um, in cyclonic activity or cyclonic energy. And in fact, hurricane and cyclone energy and activity actually have hit a 20-year low in the last year. Okay, what else have we heard? Ice melting, that's a big one. Glaciers are retreating. People go up to the top of Kilimanjaro and, and try to show that the ice on Kilimanjaro is retreating. One of the things about glaciers is, is it's not a very good metric of warming at first because uh, particular ice fields like on Kilimanjaro are more driven by changing precipitation patterns than they are by changing temperatures. But folks have said, looked at glaciers the last 20 or 30 years, and indeed they have been retreating. But somebody thought to look a little farther back, well, what's happened in the last 300 years? And it turns out glaciers have been retreating, as shown in the graph on the right here, for 250 years. They were retreating in 1800, and they were retreating in 1850, and they were retreating in 1900, and they were retreating in 1950. So it's hard to correlate glacier retreating with man-made activity, particularly when even the, 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 the most severe of alarmists don't really blame man and anthropogenic CO2 for any warming until about 1950. So if that's the case, what caused the glacier retreats before 1950? I mean, really, the glacier retreats today look at like just a part of a long-term trend, a recovery from the Little Ice Age of the late 18th century. Um, and if one wants to argue that the glacier retreats since 1950 have been due to global warming, then they have to explain what was causing them instead 
up to 1950, and also what caused that thing, whatever it was, causing glaciers to melt up to 1950, to suddenly turn off in 1950 at the exact same moment the anthropogenic CO2 took over. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Basically, the, the trend in ice melting has been glaciers have been retreating for 250 years ever since the Maunder Minimum and the Little Ice Age, and you can't see any real difference in that trend recently because of CO2 than you could then in periods before man was producing any significant CO2. The other big ice uh, story is up in the North Pole. Last year, you heard a lot of stories about Arctic ice hitting an all-time low. I always laughed at that. I said, you know, really the lowest it's ever been in the last, you know, six billion years. And in fact, by all-time low, what they mean is in the last 30 years since we started measuring it by satellite, essentially since 1978. And in fact, it was. It was the lowest. It was a very odd year. It was the lowest year since 1978. Uh, and it was quite low, the, the Arctic ice extent. But uh, one thing that was not mentioned in the news is ice at the South Pole at the, in the Antarctic on almost the exact same day that the North Pole hit its all-time low, hit a quote-unquote all-time high. It hit its highest ice extent in the South Pole for the last 30 years on the exact same day. And you probably didn't see that in the news very much. But in fact, they occurred at the same time, which tells you that the story is more complicated um, North, it's thought that North Pole ice may be melting because the temperatures are warmer, because they are warmer in the pole. Uh, there's a question of whether that North Pole warming is really global warming or just a northern polar regional effect that's been happening over the last 10 or 15 years. And by the way, we saw a very similar effect in the 1930s when the North Pole and Greenland were quite warm. There's also some issues about changing current and wind patterns in the Arctic Ocean that may be causing some of the melting. But, the, but, but there's clearly a complicated picture because if one can use all-time Arctic ice low as evidence of global warming, and why can't one instead use all-time ice high in the Antarctic as, Antarctic as evidence of just the opposite? And I think it's evidence of neither. It's evidence that the Earth... It's a climate. We don't understand it fully. We've only been watching it for a few years, and it's pure hubris to say we know what is normal and what is not normal in the climate. And I think a lot of the things that we attribute to man in local news, because it makes a nice news story, are really just natural variations. So are we seeing catastrophic effects of warming? Almost certainly. I say likely. Almost certainly not. Um, if, if, if there are going to be catastrophic effects... We haven't seen them yet, and we're not seeing them yet. Okay, finally, I want to spend a brief moment talking about CO2 abatement laws like AB32. I'm here. The first speaker today was Joe Nation, a uh, consultant now but used to be a California legislator, and he really wrote AB32, which is a law that mandates a CO2 cap-and-trade system in California that CO2 be, be regulated by the California Air Resource Board, something that they're still – several years later, trying to figure out the rulemaking on. And I just want to give a few random thoughts. I don't have a, a lot of time to go into it, but just a few random thoughts on this. The first thing is just to say that as a, somebody who's cared about the environment for quite a while, and, and nobody really thinks that because if you're a climate skeptic, you can't be, care about the environment. But as somebody personally really that has cared about the environment for a long time, global warming is, is it, to my mind, sucking the oxygen out of the environmental movement. Um, there are many things that are more harmful emissions and maybe things that, that affect the climate more than CO2. Uh, for example, black carbon deposits from dirty Chinese coal factories may be having more of an effect on polar ice than warming from CO2. Likewise, we all watched the Olympics in 2008. It's hard to say that tenth of a degree changes in warming really have more of an effect on us than, say, the, the health effects of that dirty air in China. There are also many other environmental issues we could be working on. And, in fact, some of those are made worse by the global warming hysterically. For example, we're doing a lot of environmentally stupid things right now because we're subsidizing corn ethanol in the name of CO2 reduction. And, you know, there are many other places, given the just stupendous amounts of money that we're going to have to spend to make even small changes in temperature via CO2, um, there are many other places we can improve the planet a lot more for a lot less money.